think we did ultimately get a little bit too greedy in Act 2 there. Shouldn't have tried for the Burning Elite. I knew better, but decided to do it anyway. Should not have done that. I knew better. I'm going to boss up today. That's how I'm feeling. We get a Hovering Kite, which gives us energy the first time we discard each turn as our starting relic replacement. It's going to be rather interesting here. Forced early shop. Well, I'll put it to use then. Okay, these are identical paths. All right, this way. Would we have won that automaton fight with 20 more health? Probably not, quite frankly. I think we're also going to get hyper beamed. Part of why I didn't replay the fight. I think we were really, really far away from winning that fight. Did not have a lot of hope for that run, personally. We really needed to see an acrobatics or a backflip at some point. No, we just did not, did not put anything together that was more than just playing attacks. Uh, I guess I have to take one of these cards. It'll be Dagger Spray. Technically have to, but it's a good idea too. Damage. Blade Dance is the better single target pick here. For sure. If I'm worried about this upcoming Elite, I think the Blade Dance has to be the pick. As much as I like Crippling Cloud in general. Blur, how in interesting. I haven't found a potion yet, so I think we'll buy the Strength Potion to make that first elite manageable. Unfortunately, that means I cannot afford a card removal alongside. That's all I'll do here. How do you know being greedy was in the highest chance to win the run, even if there was a higher risk of dying in Act 2? Uh, for any particular seed, you actually can't know that. That's part of what makes Spire so deeply challenging. Um, you can kind of get a, I guess, a feel for its experience. There's a, you know, some percentage of the time. Your Act 3 layout punishes you for not taking the, the Burning Elite prior. And really only experience can give you an idea of how often that is. It's definitely possible that not get taking the Burning Elite in Act 2 would have resulted in some kind of horrible mishap for us. Like maybe maybe we end up having to Cursed Key plus Normality that we can't remove or something weird. But it's not all that often. And I, I, my, my experience tells me that, generally speaking, the best way to win your Spire runs is to get out of the current Act. Wondering if I should not have bought the Sling of Courage either. Maybe the Toy Ornithopter would have been the better take at the shop. That's the other thing that I think could have done. I could have done really differently was the shop. Extreme disappointments. Extreme. Okay, we'll upgrade the Dagger Spray, I think, over the Blade Dance. They're both plus four damage, but Dagger Spray is to every target. Blade Dance is only to one. Blade Dance does benefit more from the Strength Potion if I upgrade it now. But it's pretty whatever. We'll upgrade the Blade Dance next. Gremlanius Norbert. Definitely where our Strength Potion gets used. Probably we'll also use the Fear Potion. Honestly, we just need to kill this guy quickly. Or, or else. You know? You know the rules when Gremlin Knob's involved. Win or die.
Ooh, and we get well rewarded a very early Molten Egg, and we already have Terror in the deck. This is surely a bit of a blessed start, as now all attack cards that we see are going to be upgraded. All of them. This Riddle with Holes it says plus on it. Poison Stab says plus on it. But also, intriguingly, a Doppelganger. I think a bit of an underrated rare card here. Doppelganger says, make your next turn better by spending energy on this turn. The more energy you have, the better I think Doppelganger gets. And I think Doppelganger is a, a relatively weak card with a really good upgrade as it goes to X plus one. I'm actually going to take this and we're going to make it our first upgrade. And I'm going to try to show off what it is that Doppel can do for you. Poison Potion will help in our next fight, too. I'm not too worried about the second elite. Um, yeah, okay. So we'll go here. I'm going to upgrade this Doppelganger immediately. See how I feel about that. Tiny chest inside a regular chest. Chestception. Feels like a pretty easy opportunity to grab our blue key, although we would get at least one guaranteed extra relic out of it, as we're taking, what, two events this act alone. Yes, Pew Desu, with a, with a Molten Egg, or an appropriate egg type, any card that's added permanently to your deck from any source, including transforms or events or card duplications. If you duplicate an unupgraded card and you have the appropriate egg, the new copy you get will be upgraded too, for example. I could even take four events this act. Oh my goodness, you're right. Instant tiny chest payoff. No. It's your time to shine, doppelganger. Show me. Your power. If I'd played any amount of strikes last turn, I wouldn't have drawn Dagger Spray. Food for thought. Now I can do this. Thanks, Doppelganger. You've done well today. Right, kill this one, but I can also mostly block the hit and then do a lot of damage to the front one, giving me a good opportunity to kill it next turn. Let's do that. Actually, discard a ship here. Bring it down to 12, so the dagger spray or two strikes will kill it. Beko, making our first attack each combat do eight more damage. Very good with Dagger Spray. Very good front load in general. Eviscerate Plus is back, begging to be let back into the deck. Will I accept it? It is nice with Akabeko. And it do say plus. And I do have a Gambler's Brew. And I have a Hovering Kite. So a deep desire to add cards that say discard on them. All right, Eviscerate. You can play. Cleric offers either a heal or a card removal. Oh man, I am going to go four events. No way I'm going to the shop now. 
Maybe I should take some more fights just to get more card rewards, though. Let's start with a uh, strike removal from Cleric. Have a good day. I would like either a block card or a draw card for a Guardian. Or a Dagger Throw Plus. That would also be pretty acceptable. Two events. I'll lose some max health for the Golden Idol, giving us forever more, more money. And then this just is a combat. Good. Apparently not actually able to get a lot of use out of Hovering Kite. But we'll fix that. We'll fix that. Oh, shoot. Right. Yeah. Whatever it takes. There's the backflip that I want. As much as I do like another upgraded dagger spray here, I really do want this backflip quite desperately. I'll take one last combat. One last card reward. At this time, the single red slaver. Um... Fight. Here's the acrobatics that I want. Beautiful. Abashin, thank you so much for eight months of support. Sucker Punch, not bad either, but we need that draw in discard to really start to make this deck function properly. Very tempted to upgrade said backflip for the Guardian fight. That Eat block is going to just line up so perfectly on so many draws. The other good upgrade option, I think, here is the Acrobatics. Don't currently want to upgrade Terror. Go backflip upgrade. It's going to be our major, major block and draw engine for a long time. Draw me some cards. Exactly. Can even play the eviscerate this turn. Guardian only hits you back one time per attack card that you play, not per time the attack hits. So we're able to play Eviscerate without much harm there. Masterful stab was last run, right? That's right. damage to transform guardian blade dance plus eviscerate gets there it's a good sign they were able to immediately pop guardian back into their shell Too. GG. All right, that went really, really smoothly. We get offered Wraith Form and Venom or a thousand cuts. Probably will take the Wraith Form this time, giving us a way to be intangible, invulnerable for a couple of turns. Doesn't feel like thousand cuts or in Venom is all that good. Well, actually, in Venom does play decently with the. 
upgraded attacks we have so far, and any additional multi-hit stuff that we include. So, not that bad, actually. I'll grab Wraithworm, though, for a couple turns of invulnerability, and I will definitely grab a Runic Pyramid, allowing us to retain our hand every turn. That's going to make Doppelganger a little awkward, actually. But Pyramid will absolutely let us line up the Eviscerate quite nicely. If we wanted more energy, we could, we could go with Runic Dome, preventing us from seeing what enemies do. That's pretty awkward. Or Astrolabe, transform and upgrade three strikes. That could perhaps be the best of all out of these options. But I personally will choose the Runic Pyramid and hope that the card draw we have thus far added is going to carry us. We'll be avoiding an early Burning Elite. I know better than to engage with that. We'll head to this shop through a fire and we'll maybe tackle one or two Elites later on, but fighting Elites too early? Suicide. Against the champ at the end of the act, our plan is... Hmm. We need a plan. Quickly, come up with a plan. Uh-oh. Turn 1s are, are in general going to be our weak point with the Runic Pyramid because we traded our starter relic for something else. I'm going to go ahead and Gambler's Brew these five. This, this fight will be pretty bad for us overall. And it might just be an immediate Wraith form. We'll see. Okay, not today. Not bad. Would anyone like a footwork plus? Actually, what about prepared? Finisher plus also. Not bad. All things considered. With pyramid. I'm going to see like 2,000 prepareds. That's what I said about the turbo. And then I totally didn't. <laughs> that said, with burning pyramid, I, and I have a backflip already, I'm going to take this footwork plus to give us some fantastic decks. I'm going to find more potions. Oh, I think I like these potions. I guess the weak potion's okay. Okay, we'll take the weak potion. Don't trust a snack of oil with Runic Pyramid. No, thank you. And I have Molten Egg. Let's take one more event. Hmm. Get donked, sir. You want to keep Survivor for next turn. There's footwork, of course. So we're making sure that we properly take advantage of Hovering Kai. I think I'll just Survivor Wraith form here. One health loss there. A calculated gamble lets us discard our whole heckin' hand. Drawing new cards again. Really amusing how with the Molten Egg I've actually taken almost no attacks. Um, and that is going to continue to be true as long as the cards that I keep finding allow us to play our really good attack over and over again. We still need more cards that increase our total number of cards in hand. More acrobatics, more backflips. Um, hmm, thinking about it. Yeah, we'll use it. Keeping the shiv in hand for what exactly? Not sure. Just, oh, for calculated gamble, of course. 
Like, surely there's a reason to hold on to this thing. I'll actually use it here. Oh, she won't heal again. I guess that's a good thing. Heckin' get him. Oh, the double of Israel draw. Even better. Headed to beautiful places, chat. You have a runic pyramid, take every piercing whale you see. Words of wisdom from none other than yours truly. Deadly Poison Plus also not actually terrible, I suppose. But what about Tactician? A way to gain energy by discarding it. Interesting with Doppelganger. Hmm. Remember, energy is only useful if you can spend it. Currently, I don't think I can spend that energy. Other than on Doppelganger. The heck. Turn ones, man. Okay, we're allowed to rest in this... Wacky world. Okay, that's fine. Keep pushing around. So what I'm getting from this is that I should just gamble into the Eviscerate here. Yeah, and ruin your day. Actually. Yes, this is the one. Card draw. Expertise draws until we have a certain number of cards in hand. And that is going to be absolutely super helpful, especially if we can get it prepared or something for refilling the hand once we've emptied it. Now we could even take something like a Concentrate. Uh, we're going to be avoiding this Elite. Upgrade here, upgrade Wraith Form. Look at the shop, and then we'll consider what to do from there. Currently, we're in a pretty commanding position. We've got really good defense. Our offense is still in need of help. And a prismatic shard appears. How cute. Can actually seeing this being a pretty good use case for Panacea, letting us block the debuff of Wraith Form. Um, that per turn decks down. Backstreet Skeeter says, would a boss relic to increase hand size be good? I think it would be very cool if there was a way to increase your maximum hand size in Spire. There's a lot of different neat things you could do with that. It would definitely be very powerful under the right circumstances. So currently we've got Dexterity, we've got Block Cards, we've got Card Draw. We would like more draw and discard. A shard would make it harder to find that, that's for sure. It feels like I want that backflip, actually. I have seen a modded relic that reduced your max hand size down to seven in exchange for one energy per turn. That was, that was a fun one. It's completely free until it's not. And then it's horrible. <laughs> hmm. I actually kind of like Slice Plus on sale. I'm going to incorporate you. Lose regular strike. Don't take the backflip? Question mark? What about the Panacea? Won't be able to upgrade the Panacea. 
All right, last question. Do I take the shard? Heck, let's do it. Got the money left, after all. Prismatic shard means we can now find colorless cards and cards from other colors. Whether or not this is a good thing is left as an exercise to the viewer. Get this gamble upgraded. Oh boy, more energy. Happy Flower is extra good. And it's Book of Stabbing time. Just in time for expertise to show off what it could theoretically do for us. Took some damage on that turn, but now we're fine. Just redraw the wraith form. Easy. Save the energy. I could even manipulate Happy Flower from here if I wanted to, but I think I'm just going to take the win. Get ourselves a boat thingy. That's going to help with turn one, giving us 10 block on turn one. And I love these options. FTL is kind of like a free attack, draws a card, whereas follow up is energy free and does pretty good damage. Better than slice. I'll take the FTL, I think, because if it would fail to draw a card, we can simply wait. And oh man, upgrading all strikes and defense, not something I've done in a while. But now is the time. Let's get back to basics here with five upgraded defends. These will block for 11 each with the power of footwork. And the strikes aren't too, aren't slouches either. It is possible to get uh, off clan cards in Monster Train via a couple of the uh, caverns events, but nothing truly special. Can't really, can't really quite mimic a shard run. Hmm. Did you hear about the bird that had to come up with jokes on the spot? He was able to wing it. Ooh, dagger spray is here too. Okay, we'll hold on to this doppelganger for a minute. They were unflapped. The crowd goes mild. That joke was foul. Actually, I'll play this before it gets me a daze. Keep the two shits. Just in case I want them later. To what foul purpose? I'm not sure. Again, for a calculator gambling them. That makes sense to me. These aren't as bad with the pyramid because half cards in your hands, and then you don't care what the enemy's doing. Also, you're rude. Stinky Chosen. You are very rude.
Every piercing well you see. Every one. Okay, we're definitely in good shape for this next elite, whatever it might be. We know it's not Book of Stabbing, so it's either the Three Slavers or Gremlin Leader. Actually, wait. Hmm. I want a Power Potion, but I think we're capable of both of those. Yumes will help a lot here. Tools of the trade might also, but I want the damage over time here. That makes sense. If we get attack next turn, we always have options. Like Wraith Farm. Wraith Farm is a good option. All right, well, if this is what's happening, then what I'm going to do is focus all of my damage on the Gremlin Leader. We're just going to ignore the minions for now. Let the humans kill them. too bad. Get lots of money, another fairy in a bottle, just like last run, a preserved insect to make future elites easier to kill, and Clash, Warcry, or Shockwave. How fascinating. Warcry is kind of interesting, actually, with uh, with some of the stuff this deck can do. Hmm. Let's just make better use of the expertise. Let's just put Eviscerate on top of the deck so that I can then calculate a gamble into it. We already have a source of Vulnerable in Terror, so I'm less interested in Shockwave than I would be otherwise, but it's still okay. I think I'm going to take this unupgraded Warcry. Genuinely. Do some stuff with it. And we'll take one last event here. It is the Thwack. It's thwack right after we find a preserved insect, no less. Very lucky here. We're going to get 100 gold, 2 relics, and the card reward. It's good stuff. Tangling me is very rude. Just play this nice and slow. Oh, entangled. That's right. This turn. Done, weakling. Time for the real challenge. One gremlin knob plus one taskmaster. Fun little thing to note here, their health is reduced by the preserved insects, but 
Their size is not. They are not physically smaller like normal elites are. Something about the coating of it, I guess. Do I Akabako Eviscerate or Akabako Dagger Spray? I think it's gonna be the Eviscerate here. See you later, Nubbers. No knobs today. And what reward? The bird face turn heals us too when we play a power card. We have two of those in the deck. Toxic Egg will upgrade any and all skills we add from here on out, which is... <laughs> Oh man, which is going to let us do some really cool things. I am super taking a hologram here, as that's going to allow us to return cards in the discard pile. I'm thinking of Viscerate is a crazy good hologram target, personally. Mental Fortress Plus, very cute here, too. Oh, I like where we're headed now. Um, I think I get to upgrade here also. I think it's time we upgraded Terror? Getting the card draw upgrades is going to be important too. Well, let's make this free to start. Champ is a man who builds up strength over time. He's kind of arrogant and relaxed in the first portion of this fight. But once we drop him below half, that's when the angry mode begins. Hmm. Speaking of angry mode... Play. We have a Wraith Form for Execute if we need it. What? Hello? I had no idea it worked like that. <laughs> Is it going to go back to zero cost when I play this acrobatics? That's my question. It's going to be really weird. No, down to two. Okay. Well, heck. That is not what I expected. <laughs> I had no idea that Eviscerate reset its cost when you play it. Makes sense. And we still have plenty of other good hologram targets, but I, I thought that was going to be better. Quite a bit better. Draw expertise. I guess I'll just play a piercing well here. chance, I think. Oh, 
Hologram Calculated Gamble, the power. Alright, chance going below half health here. So on this turn, he will purge debuffs, including our stuff. So you're telling me if I hologram the Eviscerate, it's three cost right now? Because that's even weirder. That means the Eviscerate can't decrease its cost if it's not in your hand. Which doesn't make any sense. It's not true if you draw into it, exactly. So, like, what is happening? Upgrade this expertise. It's alright. Always have Ghost and Jar and Fairy in a bottle no matter what happens here. More likely, I just use the Wraith form. Actually, wait, can I block you the old fashioned way? I think I can. Close enough. Can hologram, for example, the slice, even if not the eviscerate. Dar. No, sir. It is you who will die. GG, champ. GG. Would anyone like a lesson learned plus? That seems kind of okay. Although most of the cards being added to the deck are already upgraded. So we're not upgrading a whole lot of stuff. How many unupgraded cards are currently in the deck? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's good enough for me. With the Runic Pyramid, it's going to be very easy to land lessons. We just play it as the last card that kills the enemy. And we could eventually remove it, too. We won't be wasting our upgrades on strikes and defense, thanks to that event from Act 2. Yeah. You can come along. Oh, man. Wristblade with cards from other characters. Now that's intriguing. Hacks that cost zero deal four additional damage. Boosts our shivs. Boosts the eviscerate if it's free. Boosts the slice. The FTL. Oh, my goodness. That's actually kind of really cool. If we wanted more energy, we can take the Slaver's Collar, giving us additional energy per turn during boss and elite fights. I do think that's pretty good. Or Tiny House for a bunch of stuff. I think this is actually a really good wrist blade. Plus four damage on the cards that matter, and there are countless zero-cost attack cards that we could add from the other characters that could get really interesting here. I like it. Sure. Hey, hey, everyone. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? 
For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel to do what I love every day. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. Okay, Burning Elite is over here. I think we're very well equipped to fight elites, so I'll be going for two. Rest sites don't seem that important anymore. So I won't be going to rest sites unnecessarily. What a fascinating run we're on. As we start here then. I don't want to hit this rest site. Five damage strike. We'll do it this way then. Uh, technically, I want to play this for two health though. Any other powers? No. Gain so much focus with consume. <laughs> Actually, quite like white noise. Zero cost. Give me a random silent power. That could be random wraith forms. Random. It's two health always. Random after images. Random footworks. Random envenoms. There's quite a few things that could be good. Lesson learned will only work if we kill the final one with our lesson. things. Infinite shivs! Cards and draw piles so I can hologram the lesson learned. Now it says zero. Now I'm really confused. Yeah, because it resets at the start of each turn. That makes sense, right? Yeah, this turn. I'm going to take the mantra, but the second win was also very intriguing there. Another blade dance. Accuracy to make blade dances do even more damage. Could take Strange Spoon to make cards not exhaust half the time. I think that's actually pretty bad with um, shivs, but it could be really entertaining with the lesson learned, the white noise, and some other stuff. Ah. Enlightenment Plus makes cost reduced on... I'm not sure how that works with Eviscerate, quite frankly, but it's good with the waveform at the minimum. And you, you know the rule about piercing whales. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Second blade dance seems like a pretty good idea. Okay, let's take it. I can take the accuracy though. Maybe I should have, but I've decided not to. Actually, almost a little bit too defensive in this deck right now. Just a little bit, not a lot. Personally, not very helpful. Yes, here we go. The power. Triple damage. Shiz for 27. Well, 20 draw 2, not bad. Perseverance, way too defensive for us. I think we just keep what we have. I'm really hoping we find one more mantra card to really, oh dear god, to really uh, kick up the spice. Ah! Piercing Whale saved me. Now that you've all gotten that out of your system, what's next? More buffing, you got it. Good luck, friends. Could take a second win. Second win can actually really help us with the fact that we have too many block cards in this deck. And now we're we're also an ironclad. So our 30 card deck with one divinity card becomes a 10 card deck with one divinity card. It's gonna be pretty sweet. It's also a really nice block if I end up with a hand that's stuck. Yeah, so uh, turn one, huh? Good job, White Noise. Here, let's do the Warcry Eviscerate thing that I talked about. Still here. Get him.
Easy. Tyranithopter will heal us if I ever drink this ghost in a jar. Signature move and lesson learn really don't like each other very much. Streamline's interesting. It becomes 24 damage the third time I play it. I think we're good without, though. That is so cool. <laughs> three for three. All right, I'll just play it. That is impeccable consistency. Right there. Genuinely no idea how I managed that. Murdering. At all possible. Not quite. Always get the health back, I suppose. Sure, whatever it takes. I think I could have avoided that damage with a different playline. But I didn't. Gambler's Brew, that's a pretty good potion. What about an outmaneuver for even more energy? Does that speak to me? Only kind of. I think it could be really awkward at times. Let's go Gambler's Brew over the fairy. I'm sorry, fairy. I know I've done you wrong. Wristblade Flurry of Blows. I like where your head's at. And I like where this boat is at, too, giving us block on turn two. Might help a lot in this Reptomancer fight. 16 damage neutralize. Holy heck. Actually, let's see if I can draw Dagger Spray. I cannot. That does 17, though. I'm not afraid of the daggers. I've got my piercing well ready. And I guess my gambling, too. Here we go. Might be able to simply kill her. Actually, I could do that right now. Wow. That seems like an effective way to win. No lesson learned, but uh, the war paint will make up for it by upgrading two random skills. That's going to hit Piercing Whale and... I think that's it, actually. Well, here's the Enlightenment Plus for those who wanted to see it. Or the Blasphemy Plus. Retain, enter divinity, die next turn. Wait, we have intangibility? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Blasphemy is going to be so overpowered. Yes, only one card gets upgraded. 
and we have to sleep here, because no cards in the deck are unupgraded at this point, so the lesson learned didn't even matter. Intangibility blocks dying, that is correct. So we're able to play Wraith Form and Blasphemy together. For an ultra powerful combo. Like so. Twenty four damage shoots. So next turn we die, aka take one damage because of intangibility. Thorn's damage also won. Really just a highlight in why intangible is very, very overpowered. Pocket Watch could help us draw cards on turn two. That could be quite nice. We'll offer to Frost Orbs. Also, Forethought. Put any number of cards from your hand to the bottom of your draw pile, costing zero until played. And Expertise Plus. Okay, actually. Forethought Plus, you may venture forward with us. There's some interesting things that we can do with this, uh, especially in conjunction with the Pocket Watch. But it's essentially deck manipulation, letting us put a card further ahead, somewhere that we might want it. Does that work with the wrist blade? Yes. So, for example, if we put dagger spray on the bottom, then the dagger spray gets bonus damage from being free. Another fourth rot plus. Panic button plus is excellent. Not sure about bomb plus, but maybe a madness plus. And I'll definitely take one dark shackles plus. Enemy loses 15 strength this turn. And exhaust. Stop thinking ahead. Just a little bit of card draw. So here, for example, I'm just going to play three unobtrusive cards and let Pocket Watch get me bonus cards in hand here. And it also lets me save cards from the second wind. How interesting. That's kind of cool. Cards in our pile, so I can go. No, I can't go blast me, calculated gamble. Well, I, I could. Actually, the way to do it is blasphemy, hologram, backflip, calculated gamble. And then I drew a bunch of defense. Good job, me. So don't need to kill with lesson learned. That no longer matters. It's nothing to upgrade after all. Leg sweep plus is pretty good block. Feels Kind of unnecessary, but I don't have weaken otherwise. 
sure. We are a very defensive deck at the moment as we go into our bosses. Hey there, Frogan. You better believe we are prismatic gaming today. One, two, three. Time Eater should be very easy for this deck. Um, we can do Piercing Well Trick to reset his strength with how many Piercing Wells we have. And we can just, in general, shut down these multi-hits whenever they occur. I can use Second Wind to keep the deck thin. Get this out of my hand now. Fine for this fight to take an obscene number of turns. There's like two. here. My last piercing whale. We have to hold on to this one. turn. And I'm drawing all these again, so I might as well get rid of a whole bunch of stuff. Make that all free. Perfect timing, sir. I need to get him below half this turn. Realistically. Get a wraith form? That feels a little premature. Uh, wraith form blasts me to do it, but that feels a bit premature. Perhaps I can. I won't be able to kill next turn. There's no way. I'm going to be playing one of these Wraith Forms. In that case, do I expect to go Blasphemy next turn? In which case, I should play the three cost one. Let's do it this way. I 
That way I'm allowed to play this. So I can find something good. Kill next turn. I can play my cards right here. Uh, I think that's Hologram Blade Dance, but I'm not sure. He did get the Eviscerate. is actually a bad thing. Go this way then. I think we're just not quite there unless this gets plate dance. GG. There we go. Okay, that was kind of a difficult fight against the time meter. We should have a much easier time against the remaining elites this act, or remaining boss, this is, you get the idea. Pocket watch being absolutely helpful here. A very big deal indeed. Tools the trade, I'm gonna have to say that's worth it. Worth giving the boss four points, uh, two points of strength. Coming damage 36. Coming damage zero. Here's our real power combo. Four thought. Put all of these cards on the bottom of the deck at zero cost, and then expertise, refill my hand, please. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That's what you want to see. Wraith form if I wish to use it. I don't know that I do. It's really not that much damage, actually. Let's 
click sweep. I'll lose one of the blade dances also. Lose both piercing whales, too? Yes. We're ironclad now. That even let me activate Pocket Watch to redraw up to a, t a hand of 10 cards here. Thirty-six damage neutralize. You'll love to see it. Oh, I should have. Oh, there was a better play I could have done there. A really hilarious, fancy one. By hologramming. Oh no, I don't have it anymore. The poor thought, but it's gone. Doesn't matter then. Now we just repeatedly enter Divinity by playing this one prostrate over and over again. It's easy enough to do. now. It's really odd. Maybe it just becomes three costs when you put it in the discard pile. I wonder if that's how that works. good damage output if I do say so myself. GG Awakened One, we're on to Act 4. To thump, to thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread. Can be found throughout the room. Is this deck really 39 cards? What the heck? Doesn't feel like 39 cards. Hey there, NK the Wanderer. I think it would be be kind of nice if players got some kind of additional reward at the end of Act 3, but it's definitely not required. A rare relic would be pretty fitting. Maybe some money for the shop. It's rude not to at least get a potion, you know? Man, these are some relics. Paper Crane makes enemies who are weak deal massively reduced damage. That's very, very powerful, although we're already very good at making enemies deal no damage. Medical Kit could let us get rid of status cards permanently. The Wound and the Burn, so we don't have to draw those, don't have to draw those again against the hearts. Um, I don't know that we can ever really do anything with Sundial, but it's cute. I really like another Calculated Gamble. That I am going to buy which means I won't be taking Paper Crane. So I guess it'll be Medical Kit then. And I could afford this Good Instincts Plus if I wanted to. We're at 40 cards now. Well laid plans, hmm. Does heal us for two, but not so useful here. No, okay. Do 
do 17 by 3? Seems much more... Uh, seems to me like we should be focusing on killing Spire Shield first here. As we have many ways to deal with the Spire Spears attacks. Many, many ways. Do count against the pocket watch, unfortunately. Just have to block this with old fashioned Putzba. The OG style. More feet. Good. Okay, perfect. Happy Flower on, too, is fine. We're a boat! Anchor, horn cleat, captain's wheel. We are a boat. Oh my god. <laughs> Dual wield plus? That is broken. Wait a minute. Hmm. I mean, I'm definitely taking dual wield. There's a lot of really broken things we can do with this dual wield. We can do. We can make additional copies of any power or any attack. So multiple copies of Wraith form, multiple copies of the card from White Noise. We've got holograms to play with it. Oh boy, is it ever going to be a really, really good? It's a pretty good first couple of turns defense-wise. Tempted to hold on to Calc Gamble here. Yeah. Let's just lose a little stuff. One turn if we can. No, play this. Plus one card draw. Keep these. The cards. Okay, big attacks up first, and I'm cool with that. Hollow the prostrate, then panic button. Take almost nothing here. This will just piercing well. Now it's a good time to calculate a gamble. Yes, it is. Potentially be a very, very long heart fight. And I am completely okay with it if it is. Gamble again here? Yeah. Where did Forethought go? I discarded that a long time ago. Unfortunate. Hmm. 
have a few options here. For sure. Oh yeah, I could use the Ghost Jar right now, and then I can safely duplicate the Wraith Worm. And play a Doppelganger, too. That's pretty reasonable, actually. Intangible's mostly for surviving the singular big attacks. Less for everything else. Well, I think it's time to be a ghost. That's right. one of them on purpose here. Take some damage here. Any number of cards, you say? Whoop. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. But okay, I'm fine with that actually. Like double clicks as I uh, tried to play the card. So I double input it there. Not a problem. I don't think that's gonna be an issue for us one way or the other. I need to get forethought now, actually. said, if this fight needs to go for a long time, that's okay. Now at three, that will be a problem un unless we're intangible. I understand.
Okay. Now we're going to be using our Gambler's Brew. To set up the proper play here. for thought expertise stuff. Perfect. play one of these Wraith Worms right now. Oh wait, which in which case means I can Hologram Blasphemy. Okay. That's the winning play. As follows then. Divinity. into it. GG, Mr. Hart. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.